All right, this is going to be a long session because there are so many notes on this. Uh, it is not really huge on the uh, AP test, but it will be on there. We are doing the limits as X approaches positive or negative infinity. And we're showing how those relate to horizontal asymptotes if you studied in algebra two and pre-cal. So we're gonna get right to the notes because like I said, these are huge. So this says as X goes to really big. So if you look here, this is the X value. So as X goes really, really, really big, we say that Y or F of X is going to three. And then if X goes really, really small going to, or to negative infinity, we say Y is going to three that way as well. So therefore, we can say that these two uh, have horizontal asymptotes, or the pair of limits are as the limit as X approaches infinity of F of X, which is right up there below, is equal to three. And the limit as X approaches negative infinity is of F of X is also equal to three. Now this is what we're going to call horizontal asymptote. So the concept of limits is x approaches infinity. What happens as x goes really big. So like on a graph, when it goes way out there as far as you can go to the positive infinity or way that way as you go to negative infinity, we want to know what's happening to the y value. Is it going to the same to a certain number or is it going to go to infinity, negative infinity, something like that? And in other words, this is horizontal asymptote. So what this says up here on this graph is that if we went out to positive infinity way out here and three was up here, this graph would be approaching the three value, either from above or below. And as you went to negative infinity, it would be approaching the three value out here. Now, the weird thing about horizontal asymptotes that are different than vertical is around the origin area, you can cross the horizontal asymptote. You will never cross a vertical asymptote. So going on down here to this one, we want to know as X goes right, where is Y going? What's the Y value going to is what this is asking me. And since it's going to keep going up forever, we would say that is positive infinity. And as we go left, we're going to assume this goes up forever. We would say that is also positive infinity because it is doing both things. It is going up and down. And then the right one as you go to the, now this one is negative infinity. As you're going left, this one is going up. So that would be positive infinity. And as you're going to the right, this one's going down, that would be going to negative infinity. So there would be no horizontal asymptotes on either one of these two. Going on to the next section, it is saying uh, we're supposed to write down what the symbols mean up here at the top. And I accidentally went down a little bit. So he puts little dashed lines in there. We don't always do this. Um, so this one is saying as X goes to negative infinity, so we're going out this way, we want to know what's this Y approaching. Well, if you look right there, that value is four, so we would put a four there. And as we go left, we're gonna say this value is approaching negative two on that side. Coming out this way, if you notice the graph is getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, and what he's telling us by this little symbol, and this won't be on the pictures, by the way, he's telling me as we go to the left, this graph is approaching one. So as we go to negative infinity, I hope that's a negative infinity right there. I can't see it very well. This would be approaching one. And as we go to the right, same thing. This one's getting lower and lower and it's approaching the X axis, which is a Y value of zero. And then we have this next picture over here. We're gonna talk about the limit as X goes left. Well, this, this looks like a cosine curve that keeps going up and down the same amount. The amplitude's the same the whole way. So as we go out there, it's gonna continue oscillating up and down just slowly. It's not really an oscillation like we talked about earlier. So when we have this one, we would have to say does not exist because it's not approaching one value. It is, uh, it is continually going up and down. So we really don't know what that's doing. And then this one, 
This one is going up and down. It seems to be getting smaller, but it's going to keep going up. Your Y value is going to keep going up forever. So it's going to go to infinity or D and E. I would take either one of those for that. It could be infinity or D and E because it keeps going up forever. Now coming on down here, the limit at infinity. So I want you to think about if I had one cookie, this one was one cookie, and I divided that by one person, we'd all, this would be one. If I divided it by two, you get a half. If I divided it by 30 kids in the classroom, you get one thirtieth of a cookie. If I divided it by the United States, you get one over 331 million, which is getting super small. If I divided among the whole world, the uh, eight and a half to nine billion people on a planet, you're basically gonna get nothing. So. When you play, take any constant divided by infinity, when you plug that in there, you go to get zero, okay? And then also, same story down here, if you're going to negative infinity, you're gonna get nothing. It won't be negative nothing because zero is never negative. It's not positive or negative, it's called neutral. So that's why those both go to zero. So it says evaluate this limit. So when we plug infinity in there, we get five minus two, over infinity squared, and infinity would not even have to be squared. But no matter what this constant is on top, no matter what that is, when you divide anything by infinity, that is basically nothing. It gets so small. So that whole thing is going to be five. Going on to this next problem, we are supposed to be finding limits and infinity again, now this is, I'm gonna show you the long method for these up here at the top. So what you were supposed to learn back a million years ago was that whatever the smallest exponent was, in, or the, the, the biggest exponent in the bottom is what you would divide every single term by. So this is x to the first power, so you're supposed to divide every single thing, everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator by the biggest exponent in the denominator. And then you would reduce all of that stuff. Let's see, that says infinity. And then you reduce these x's and these x's reduce, so you end up with the limit as x goes to infinity, and this becomes two minus one over x, and then this becomes one plus one over x, and then you stick that infinity in there. So you get two minus one over infinity. And we just talked about that on the previous page and one plus one over infinity. And we said, if you take any constant and divide by infinity, it is zero. So this ends up being two over one, which is two. And then coming over here to this one, we would divide everything by the X squared. So when we do this, you would get two X over x squared, and I should have had a limit here, the limit as x goes to, and I think that's infinity again, and then we have 5 over x squared, and then we have 3x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. So we reduce this 1x with one of these, so there's just 2 over x left. Both of these reduce, so I got a 3 on the bottom, and then I'm going to plug infinities in. Well, 2 over infinity is 0, plus 5 over infinity squared is 0, and then we got 3 plus 1 over infinity squared is 0, so this is 0 over 3, which is 0. Coming to this next one, same thing. We take and divide by the variable with the biggest exponent, so we're going to do the limit as x approaches infinity. And we're going to divide everything by x squared, because that's the biggest exponent in the bottom. So these x squares all reduce and those x squares all reduce. So when you plug infinity in, you got two on top plus five over infinity squared is zero, three on the bottom, and then plus one over infinity squared is zero. So this whole thing goes to two thirds. And the last one over here, we're gonna divide everything by x squared on this one because x squared is the biggest in the bottom so we're going to get the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x cubed over x squared because x squared is the biggest in the bottom i think that's a plus 5 over x squared all over 
over 3x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. So we reduce all these. So this becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x plus 5 over x squared. And on the bottom, we get 3 plus 1 over x squared. Well, when I plug in infinities, I plug infinity in here. If you take 2 times infinity, you're still at infinity, and then this is 0. Down here on the bottom, I got 3 plus 0. So this is infinity divided by 3. Well, this number is so huge and gets bigger forever. Anything infinity divided by any number is still infinity. So in this case, the limit does not exist. And I wrote it over too far to the left, but I should be a D and E on that one. It does not exist. So after looking at all those examples, there's a shortcut you can figure out, and it's down here at the bottom. So I'm going to use shortcuts the rest of the time. This says if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So if you see right here, that's an x to the first, and this is an x squared. The biggest exponent in top is less than the bottom. Whenever you have this, you're going to find out it will always, the limit at two infinities always go to zero because of these steps. Now, if you have it one on the top, like this one that says x squared and this is x squared, they're equal. The biggest ones are equal to each other. Then that function is going to be the coefficients of the biggest exponents, the coefficients. So that is kind of a big deal because that makes it really fast when you get this. So it's the coefficients of the leading exponents. So if you look at it, coefficients of leading terms. So you see these are the biggest ones. So if I would just know that I, since the biggest ones are equal, it will always go to that coefficients of whatever's in front of those two that are equal. And then the last one, if the biggest number is on top, the numerator is greater than the denominator, these are always going to be does not exist. It will always be does not exist. Okay, we're going to go on to the next page. Now, when you have square roots, these are kind of weirdos because you have to plug in individual ones each time. So what you need to realize is the biggest exponent in the top is x, right? So the biggest exponent in the top numerator over here is an x. And then if you do the square root of 2x squared, isn't the square root of x squared also x? So these two values are identical. They're the same. Now the thing you got to be careful of is, is what term you're going to, if you're going to positive or negative. I hope you see these two are the same. Okay? So what you want to do is you're dividing everything by x. I'm going to do this the long way, and then I'm going to try to tell you the shortcut that you could have done. So you're going to have 3x over x minus 2 over x all over, and then we put everything in square roots, 2x squared over x squared, and since that x squared is in a root, that is the same as x, and then this is plus 1 over again x squared because it's in a root. The square root of a square is x. So these reduce these reduce, the others do not. So what I get on top is I'm going to get 3 minus 0 when you plug in that infinity, and on the bottom I get the square root of 2 plus 0. So this is going to end up going to 3 over radical 2. So hopefully we get that. And now when you go to the negative, all these steps are exactly the same. But what we got to think of is because we're going to negative, this value right here, when we, when we were really plugging into that, even though it's going to reduce like this one did, because we're going negative values, this number on the top, now see over here we're plugging in positive, so this is going to positive on the top, and when you square anything, it's positive. But when you plug in a negative up here, we need to realize that that is going to be going to negative 3. I guess I could do it the long way first. So limit as x approaches negative infinity. In other words, the x values are negative. So instead of dividing by x, we're dividing by negative x now. 
we are dividing everything by negative x because we are going to infinity. Now on the bottom, because it's an x squared, it's still got a positive value on the bottom because it's in the square root and we have to square it. These are still positive. So what that tells me is this value goes to negative three, while this value still goes to zero. Those two negatives make a positive, so it's plus zero, which doesn't matter. And then these reduce out, so this is still square root of two, and this is still plus zero. So this now goes to negative three over radical two. Now that's a little bit harder. So if you notice, these change. So what you got to look at is, if you're plugging a negative in to a variable that is to an odd power, that's going to change that sign to a negative. And if, no matter what a positive is plugged in, it's going to stay positive or the same sign you start with. So that's kind of tough. So we're going to use those shortcuts and come down here and find the uh, horizontal asymptotes. So if I look here, that top number has an exponent of 1. I think that bottom one, i got to look at it again. I think that bottom one has an exponent of, yes, it's 2. So because the biggest one, the biggest one is on, on the bottom, we would know that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x and the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x because of our shortcut, they both go to zero. So your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. That's our horizontal asymptote because they're the same on both. Coming over here to this next one, they are both x squared. So we're gonna do coefficients. So both limits, both limits, I'm gonna, no, I'm not even. I'm gonna cheat and write them both separate. So you take, and be, I'm squaring these, right? So I'm squaring these, so no matter what negative I plug in there, they're really positive. It's gonna be the coefficients four over two, which is two. And then the limit as x approaches a positive infinity of f of x is also the same thing. So your horizontal asymptote on this one is going to be y equals two. And then this last one over here, the biggest exponent is in the top. So what that means is, as I cube a positive, as I do the limit, as x, now let's do the negative first. As I do the negative value of this, this function, I'm taking a negative cube makes this top part negative, and it makes the bottom part is gonna be going to just two. So a negative over two, because I would divide everything by x squared, that would be four x. So your negative over positive means this, this is going to negative infinity. And then the limit as you go to right, to the right side, if you divided everything in there by x squared, you'd get 4x on top. So when you plug 4x times positive infinity, it's going to positive infinity over 2, which is just infinity. So the overall limit on this one does not exist. So I guess we would say this does not have a horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote, we would say, is none. There aren't any. Finding a horizontal asymptote, determine the equation of any horizontal asymptotes, if any, of the graph and give the function of the given function below. So we're doing the same thing here, except now we have radical. We've got a radical deal here. So this is like the radical ones we just did a minute ago. Okay, so. Sorry. So just like the radicals we did a minute ago, do you see that this is going to be 8x and then this is really, these are going to go to zero because you're dividing everything by x, right? So I don't, I don't even worry about these. But when I'm doing these two, this is 8x. So as I go, as the limit of x goes to negative infinity, see this is going to go to a negative value up here and this is going to be a positive. So when you do the limit to a negative infinity, it is going to end up being a negative eight over a radical two, because I'm squaring a negative there makes it positive and that's negative and they're equal power. And then as I go to the right side, 
as x approaches positive infinity. Now that's going to be a positive over a positive. So the limit as you go to the right side is going to be positive 8 over radical 2. So this has two horizontal asymptotes. This has an, one horizontal asymptote as you go to the left is going to be y equals negative 8 over radical 2. And as you go to the positive side, it's going to be y equals 8 over radical 2. Okay, and now we got number 12 is not on there. Did it come up on the next page? There it is. All right, example 12 is right there. And we are going to be doing this one, which is kind of hard, kind of not. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this function. Well, you should know because we graph sine forever that the top is going between negative 1 to 1 the whole way. Remember, it goes up and down from negative 1 to 1 the whole way. On the bottom, you're going to get infinity. So no matter what, there shouldn't be an equal sign. Yeah, there is. And so no matter what this goes to, any number divided by infinity is 0. And then as I go to the left, it is the same story going to the left. Again, oh, sorry, that's the right. And as we go to the right, as x goes to positive infinity of f of x, it's the same story. The graph still fluctuates between negative 1 to 1 divided by infinity, and that is still 0. So this horizontal asymptote on this one is going to be y equals 0. Now, here's some old AP calc test questions. If you notice, it's from 8 and 12, so it's been a few years ago. It says the line y equals 5, the horizontal asymptote to the graph of which of the following. So you're supposed to find all of these. And then you're supposed to find the which one of those, which one of those would have been the answer we need. So again, this problem is just like this one because even though that 5's there, that changes the period. It does not change it going from negative 1 to 1. So this limit right here, of this problem, the limit as x goes to either infinity, doesn't matter which one of this problem. I'm going to write the sine of 5x over x. That thing is going to 0. So it is not that one. That is, this has a horizontal asymptote of 0. Uh, when I do this line, this line, uh, you're doing the limit as you, I hope you all know this is a line, right? This is a graph of a line with a slope of 5 going like this. So as you go to the left, this is going to negative infinity to the left and positive infinity to the right, which not, neither one of those are limits, so this limit does not exist. As you go left, it's negative and right's positive. It goes down and up, so that one does not exist. And then we do this next problem right here. Do you see the biggest powers in the bottom? There's the x to the zero in top, x to the first. So we're supposed to know that this limit on this one goes to zero, no matter what direction you go. And then this next one, they're equal. You got a five up here and a negative one. So what that means is this limit on this one is going to approach five over negative one, which is negative five. That is not five. So it, none of these so far. So I could quit right there because I know that's going to be the one, but let's, let's take a look at this one. Do you see that the biggest power squared, the biggest power squared, even though they're not over top of each other, they're the biggest powers. So this limit is going to 20 over four, which ends up being the five. So that one is y equals five. That's the one we want. Coming on down to this next one. And by the way, if you just looked at those, you should have looked around. You, if you just look at these, most of these, you should know them right away. What's the horizontal asymptote of this function in the xy plane? And we are supposed to be telling what this one's going to be again based on that. I want to see if you guys can figure this one out. Um, well, yeah, let's see if you guys can do this. I'm going to have, I want you to look at these two problems and see which one of these you think works. And then remind me in class, and we will do this 2008 multiple choice question. Uh, here's a similar AP style to the 2008 number 19, and I'm not going to do this one yet because I want to see you guys give a shot and see what happens. 
So we'll do these two in class if you cannot get them, uh, if you can't get them later when we're uh, doing this stuff. I'm going to do one last little thing here, slant asymptote. Slant asymptotes happen whenever the biggest exponent in the top is one greater, see that's a square, it's one greater than the one in the bottom. And what we do to find that is called uh, long division. So you take the top thing, x squared minus 2x plus 4, and you stick that inside the division symbol. What's on the bottom, you stick out in front, and then you're going to ask yourself, what times x gives you x squared? So that's x, and you take x times x is x squared. And then you take x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And then you, if you remember, you subtract. So that means this sign has to be negative and this sign goes to positive. And when you subtract those are zero and you bring a four down, well, that's your remainder. So this is four over X minus two. So now we are thinking about the limit here, the limit as X approaches negative infinity for this one. And we are thinking about the limit as X. And so this part goes to zero, right? And then we're thinking about the limit as we plug in infinity. This goes to zero again. So the slant asymptote is always going to be whatever is in there before the remainder. So y equals whatever's not the remainder is the answer, y equals x. So in other words, as you go left here, this, this function goes to negative infinity. And as you go right, it goes, the function, the limit goes to positive infinity. And that's what it said as that last step of the shortcuts. They will not exist. So uh, see if you can do that 18 or the, uh, the last, those two problems from the AP test. And then I will see you guys in class. Where is Mike?